Welcome to the Inspiration Incubator. Here we rejuvenate, reconnect, reteach, and redirect. I'm your host, Leona Baker. It is our hope that you leave inspired with resources and information to help you achieve your goals and dreams. Our world needs you, so let's see who is the next guest on the Inspiration Incubator. This episode of the Inspiration Incubator has been presented by Gold Star Tax and Financial Solution. IRS debt negotiation, income tax preparation, auto, life, home, health insurances. Just reach out to Yvette Allen at 832-593-4990. Again, Gold Star Tax and Financial Solutions. You can beat your tax debt with the IRS today. This segment of the Inspiration Incubator is presented to you by Dr. Tamara Beckford with You Are Caring Docs, a telemedicine urgent care provider. To receive remote services, to meet specific needs without going into an office, please log on to her website at www.youarecaringdocs.com. Remember, when you need telemedicine urgent care, Contact Dr. Tamara Beckford. Mrs. Howard Carr, affectionately known as Dr. J, was born in Ohio, raised in Indiana, and became an adult in California. She holds a bachelor, master's, and a doctorate's degree all in education with specializations in family and community services and religious studies. As a first-generation college student, Dr. J has first-hand knowledge of how a college preparatory program and strong support system can provide students and families with skills, resources, and access to higher education. Dr. J has worked in the public education system for over 33 years, primarily working with students representing low-income and first-generation populations. Her experience includes working in K-12 schools and administration and post-secondary community in four-year colleges and universities. In 1994, she was instrumental in opening one of the first technical charter schools in San Diego, which is still educating students with great success to date. Dr. J has been involved with young people serving as a role model and mentor in every community that she has been a part of. Her unwavering dedication and going over and beyond attitude have resulted in students excelling in their pre-college academics, post-secondary education, advanced careers, and overall becoming productive citizens in society. In 2017, after successfully serving for 10 years as a director of a federally funded STEM academy, the program was defunded by the federal government. In conjunction with the discontinuation of funding, Hurricane Harvey ravaged through and displaced many of our students and families. The combined effects left students that were dedicated to pursuing their post-secondary STEM degrees in dire need of support services. It is in this void that Dr. J pulled money from her retirement and started Stembridges Houston, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so they would still be a beacon of hope for students and families. She consistently encourages students to be ahead of the game. She has accepted the responsibility to provide partnerships and resources that eliminate any excuses for students to not be successful. She believes exposure to STEM will better prepare students for their careers and futures. As a result of her efforts and dedication spanning over 30 years, she has made STEM learning and post-secondary education more accessible to thousands of students. When Dr. J is not working with students, she enjoys spending time with her family and working in her local ministry. Welcome, Dr. J, to the Inspiration Incubator, a podcast powered by Plans of Action Houston. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? 
I'm doing amazing. Uh, today, you are joining us as a global leader in STEM, first lady, mother, wife, and just an amazing community leader. Dr. J, when I think of you, dynamic would be the operative word to describe you. Beauty, brains, boldness, favored, centered, and consistently emotion. You are a kind woman, yet extremely giving of your most precious resource, which is your time. Having had read your bio earlier, and to put it into perspective, you were destined to work with young people, and you have served as a role model and mentor in every community that you have been a part of. Your unwavering dedication, going beyond the call of duty, has resulted in students excelling beyond their limitations in their environment. Service areas include, but are not limited to, pre-college academics, post-secondary education, advanced careers, and overall becoming productive citizens in society. I remember and was a part of the impact you made in the lives of the youth at San Jacinto College when you provided them an opportunity for exposure, an evening with Dr. Maya Angelou. After discontinued funding of a federal grant that you were directing simultaneously, the city suffered the results of a natural disaster, which was Hurricane Harvey. You being the visionary and leader that you are, like the mighty eagle, you rose to the call of leadership and when there's a storm, although all the other animals run and take cover, the eagle gets excited because he and she was built to ride the waves of the storm. Their wingspan can just fly on top of the storm. And that was you. You literally flew into the eye of the storm to lift your students and families up above their despairing circumstances, providing hope. You accepted your calling, Stembridge's Houston, and it remains a beacon of hope for so many families. Many people do not know that you borrowed money from your retirement to just to fund and support services, in addition to meeting payroll for your staff. Dr. J, you have remained committed to providing resources to eliminate excuses while Filling in the personal gaps. All of the students will be successful under your leadership as a result of your selfless sacrifice. Hundreds of students have been and will continue to soar beyond their limitations. So let's start right here for the audience. When did you know that empowering young people would be your life's work? So I knew that I would be working with young people and that that would be my purpose several years ago while living in San Diego, California. And I was working at a middle school and I was in charge of doing attendance for 1400 plus students by myself. And so that included making sure that students that were truant, that I was chasing them down, trying to get them to get back into school. And there was a young lady that um, I had to contact. She was being um, truant. She wasn't coming to school, ditching. And so when I met with her mother, we developed a plan that we were gonna try to get her back on the right track. and. The very next day, as I'm driving to work, I see her walking in the opposite direction. So I pulled over and I told her to get in the car and we proceeded to have a in-depth conversation. And she said how she hated school. She didn't want to be there. She didn't like being around the people there. She didn't like her classmates. She, she just overall didn't want to be there. She just hated school. and. We talked for about an hour and I was able to connect with her and understand that, you know, everything's not always going to be to our liking. 
but there's some things we just have to get done because it's in our best interest. And long story short, her son, her oldest son is my godson to this day. And I just had a conversation with her last weekend and we talked for about an hour. She, she went on to um, graduate from high school. We stayed connected. From that point on, she would ride to work with me. I would pick her up for school. Um, we connected on a level that was beyond just the attendance clerk and a student. And it was, it was a great feeling to know that I was a part of that, that she actually went to college, that she actually you know has a family and married with children. And it, it, it's a great feeling to know. And, and I believe that's probably when I knew for sure that I was not going to be the tr traditional educator or the traditional school worker. Well, you know, um, I've seen you in your element um, and, you know, several years ago and, and watching Simbridge's Houston evolve from a seed into just a beautiful flower, just housing so many young people and community leaders who rally behind you because they believe in you and uh, they are a part of the vision that you have helped to walk us through. Um, it's, it's just a special connection that you have with people. And it's, it's amazing how many people, I mean, at any given day, all of several students can be at your house, you know, just enjoying time with you, talking with you. And you just have that gift of energy to focus on each student, each individual to help meet their needs, whether it's through resources, whether it's, you know, just engaging with them so that they feel empowered, so that they feel a sense of worth, you know, just listening to them. It's so important to listen to our youth, uh, for them to be heard, for them to utilize their voices and to be expressive uh, because they have so many different skill sets, so many different desires. And if they keep these emotions in without expressing themselves and having someone to share with, they don't necessarily walk through the steps that they need to to make the decisions, the correct decisions that they need to make. Can you tell us, Dr. J, what role has your faith played in your life? When I look at your personality and your ability to connect, how was it? growing up with your parents and your siblings and some of the values that they installed in you? It, it was, um, I had a great childhood, um, but I did grow up um, in a household that from the beginning taught sacrifice and taught about giving. My father is 89 years old and um, was a pastor, preacher, and up until about three years ago, he was still preaching and teaching. And with him being a preacher and a pastor, my mother being a first lady, I learned that they that you have to give, that it's all about giving. My mother taught me at a young age to always help others. She taught me how to be there as a support for others. And like you said, she taught me about my faith in God. And for all the years while I was growing up, you know, you would hear about God and you knew about God. But it wasn't until I grew older did I know him for myself, which is exactly what my mother said would happen and would need to happen. For me to have my faith in in reality and for years I remember my mother um, going to help take care of cancer patients and doing their laundry and making sure that they were taken to the doctor and I would be with her while she was doing all of this my dad was at the church he was the businessman he was doing everything that needed to be done to maintain the household and the church so I was with my mother quite a bit and we would be together serving others. So that was that was something that I learned very early on. 
Um, and my mother's been gone over 20 years, but that has never left me. And I believe that's why I give so much because she was a brilliant mother and it was her spirit of giving and her spirit of being a mother to others that was instilled in me. And I believe that's why I am the way that I am. That's why people probably call me their second mom, you know, or another mother figure because I always go beyond and go into the faith realm as far as trying to see spiritually what is needed, not just in a natural. You know, um, Albert Einstein, there's a quote that he has about serving and it's only a life lived in the service to others is worth living. All right, it's time for sponsors in the spotlight. Today's sponsors are Custom Cover Arts. Now, I want you to go to customcoverarts.com Take a look at their gold, platinum, and diamond packages. One of our lucky listeners, they're going to be able to choose which package is right for them and receive a nice discount. Stay tuned to see how you can enter to win. And remember, support our sponsor, Custom Cover Arts. As we transition and just to reflect back, um, some people may or may not know that we actually met in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, the excitement and the energy from you and your students was truly genuine. Can you share a little bit about the experience with your students and what led you to want to actually be a part of a conversation with Dr. Maya Angelou? What was it about that particular event that, you know, your students were wanting to participate and you actually led them to that participation, which was you know, will always be uh, an an impactful event that exposed students to a legendary and iconic uh, African-American historical figure in our lives forever. Well, like you said, this Dr. Angelou Angelou is uh, iconic. And I've always been an admirer of her and her work. And so when the opportunity came, it was actually a bonus for me as well, because (laughs) us being able to go was the driving force was, oh, I want to be able to see her. I want to hear her. I've never heard her in person. I I would love to attend this. So that's really where the foundation of us attending that event came from and prompted me to call and say, Yes, um, what can we do so we can get tickets so we can afford to, to bring um, 40 students to, to see this iconic figure? And it was an experience that the students will never forget. It's an experience that I personally will never forget. And um, I know that I, I still talk with the majority of those students and we'll have conversations where we're just sitting reminiscing over different memories, different events, different things that we did together. Um, And that's always a subject that comes up about how great of an experience that was. My opportunity to, uh, to expose them to something that they normally wouldn't be exposed to. Yes. Being that they were first generation, a lot of them were low income. They would never have that opportunity as teenagers, young teenagers, to be able to have that type of experience. So it, it was, it, it just worked out perfectly. And it was, it's like I said, something that we'll always remember and cherish being able to, to witness and hear her in person and hear her words and hear her voice and be able to experience the impact personally from her. Wow. Well, it was a a true treat um, connecting with you and uh, reaching out to you all. Um, There were several schools actually that I uh, reached out to and uh, I was just so excited that the students could get that kind of exposure. Now, 
as it relates to her books and how that connects us as just individuals, Dr. Maya Angelou, a lot of people may or may not know unless they read her books. She was actually a single parent. Mm -hmm. And Dr. J, when I look at someone like you, like the other day, you changed your profile picture and you just look so beautiful and you said stress free. And I'm like, (laughs) look at my sister, you know, you just glowing and showing and just, you know, showing and proving you look beautiful. What people don't realize sometimes, regardless of your leadership role and with all the responsibilities around you, and we're definitely going to dive into some wonderful things that is happen. But just for the sake of the audience and for people who need to be uplifted and have that connection and and understanding that humanity with humanity, we're all tied together, whether it's highs or lows, whether it's the sun shining or the sun setting, we're all one, we're all children of God. And I just want them to know you too have also experienced loss in your life. And one of the The ways that I've seen you just get through it is just by being consistent, you know, with showing up for yourself, showing up for your family. Um, It's nobody but you and God who truly understands how it feels unless someone else has experienced that, how it feels to lose a young adult child. But if you could share some of that with us and how you as a leader just walked your, yourself through that situation for anyone who's listening, who is in leadership or chooses to walk on that path so they can understand, yes, you also have encountered some difficult times in this life and some stresses that have been overwhelming. Yeah. So experiencing um, death is always, in my opinion, out of body experience. Where you're there, you see what's going on, you know what's going on, but you're really trying to comprehend what's going on. The reality of what's going on. And when we lost our son, he was 24 years old and he had cardiac arrest and was on life support for several days. It was like a dream. It was an out-of-body experience. And having the doctor say that he was technically deceased and that they were going to take him off of machines was overwhelming. And I mean, just overwhelming. And, and it's sometimes it's very, even today, sometimes it, it, it doesn't seem real. It seems like it's a dream. Like there's really not the absence of him physically being here on this earth. And I recall the night before they took him off of life support. And my husband, he um, woke up early. And when he woke up, he said, my my son is gone. And I said, what do you, what do you mean he's gone? And he said, he's gone. God has taken him. I said, well, you don't think he's going to let him come back? You know, he's not going to bring him back to us. And he said, no. He's gone. He's gone. And that was just hard to accept. But my husband being the man of faith that he is, I knew what God had spoken to him was true. And so we had to be strong. We had to, ex- we, we couldn't accept it at the point, but we had to be strong. We had to be strong for our other kids and, you know, family And it was the faith of God and having peace and knowing that even though we had dreams for him on earth, God had a different dream. God had a different plan. And my son, he was the type of person that could interpret scriptures. He was a prayer warrior. He could, if you needed someone to pray, lead prayer, you could go to to Isaiah. He was going to 
pray. And you, and you knew that God was going to listen to him. Um, but that was for that season. And God had to give us peace and let us know that he was at rest with him. Anything that was going on in this earth, he no longer had to deal with. Whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, he no longer had to deal with that. He was at peace. He had taken him home and he had taken him to his rest. And all he wanted us to do was have peace in that he was in control and that we trusted God for whatever reason that he was in control and that this was his will. So there's been obviously plenty crying nights then that never goes away. Um, you know, but when, even when I work with different young people, I frequently think of him and, you know, share his testimony with them that, you know, use your time wisely. Use, use what, use the gifts that God has given you. Use the talents that God has given you because we're all here for a purpose and you, we want to make sure that we're walking in purpose, even as young adults, even as teenagers, we still have to walk in purpose. So I think that that has been something that has been able to help me help others, young people who are in a place where they need to hear that testimony. They need to hear that, you know, God is God, regardless to whether you're 14, 24, or 54. <laughs> That's such a, a, a powerful message for you to impart to our youth with using your personal experience. Um, there's a young lady in Philadelphia who I grew up with. Unfortunately, she recently uh, lost her son, but that was due to, unfortunately, uh, gun violence. And she's having such a difficult time. Um, as I think about the lives of our young people with all the gifts and the talents that they have, you encouraging them to focus on their purpose in life is very critical because you never know how that's going to impact someone. They may be on the wrong path and just hearing that word from you, hearing you connect your personal experience with your son. I mean, who would have thought that his uh, situation was going to be relatable to um, cardiac arrest? I mean, who would have thought? And he was a handsome young man. He was an intelligent mm. young man. You know, I've had the pleasure of seeing all the beautiful photos of your family um, just, just amazing, amazing. So thank you for sharing that. Now, as it relates to the galas, uh, working with you on the first gala in 2018, The Art of STEM, that was such a delight, yet it was also demanding because you knew what you wanted. When you wanted it and you were adamant about ensuring your students, parents had everything they needed to, that they needed despite time or resources. And that, that's what you call a visionary. That's what you call a goal getter. Someone who can see the unseen. Someone who understands that it's important to have goals in spite of maybe some limitations that may be presenting themselves. Not only did the event sell out, it was an unforgettable evening that will forge future relationships and partnerships with the next gala which was in 2019, Stand By Design. Now, during that gala, it grew expeditiously. And Miss Jessica Terry, she was the event chair. Um, she was also a previous awardee. The sights, the sounds, and the sensational acts prepared for a night of elegance and just the art. It was just one for the record books. When I reflect back on that, and I just remember saying, wow, you know, look how everything you know, came together seamlessly, and, you know, and my role was different than it was the, the previous year when, when we launched. Um, so having an opportunity to just be surprised on some of the elements myself, now upon reflection, I'm so grateful to God that everything just came together seamlessly and, and it's just in such a powerful way because unfortunately COVID is here mm -hmm. now. You know, with COVID being here, God knew 
he he had he had to give us something amazing because there were just so many seeds that you had planted and you were just harvesting. I mean, from just to go from you know the committee that we had and then just all the different people that you started connecting with the meeting and we just were all networking and just focused on SBH and just watching it shoot up and grow. I mean, it's just been nonstop. It's just been such an amazing ride, and I'm just grateful to be on the roller coaster. Now, fast forward, um, the plans for the 2020 gala, they are postponed due to COVID. So can you share with the audience some of the general plans just to move forward? What can they expect in 2021 and how can they support SBH? Yes. So the gala, yes, it is. <laughs> it, it was overwhelming. The turnout and the attendance and the participation and the support that was given, like you said, not just 2019, but our inaugural year, which in reality, we have to give honor to where honor is due, really was a result of you, (laughs) Ms. Leona. (laughs) Thank you, Dr. J, for the opportunity to work with you on your inaugural gala and just to be a part of all the wonderful things that SBH has to offer. You could have chosen anyone within your massive network to work with. So I appreciate you and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, Because I had never really thought about, okay, should we have it? We're going to have a gala. You know, we, we, we talk about banquets and that type of thing. Um, but having a gala to that magnitude had never really crossed my mind until you brought it up and st- we started having conversations. So we want to continue the momentum. And like you said, COVID has kind of put a little monkey wrench in it, but that's not going to stop us. We have scheduled a new date for our gala, which is February 27th. That's when our gala will be. At 2019 gala, we raised and gave, I believe it was close to, I think we were about 8000 a little over $8,000 in scholarship money to students. Mm-hmm. And this year, our goal is to go beyond that, beyond $10,000 in scholarship money. And I know that it can be done because um, right now, the support that students need is a priority for many individuals. We don't want what's going on in our society to detour them. And so that's going to be our focus for the gala on February 27th is to be raising money specifically so we can give away some scholarships. And not limited to that, but that's that's one of our focuses and one of our goals. And this year, um, well, it'll be 2021. 2021, we will be focused on, the theme will be technology. We already have some great plans that we are um, getting together um, for a tech show and lighting show and lasers and all of that. Um, so we're expecting it to be a really exciting event. Um, we can always use help from individuals if someone wants to sponsor a scholarship, if they want to give to the general scholarship fund that we have. We have some scholarships that we give out every year. We have some scholarships that are donations for specific companies or individuals. So we're we're always looking to have support for our young people that are getting ready to go to college and our young people that are currently in college. So that's the best way to support is if you want to give a scholarship, you want to name it in your business name or you want to give a scholarship in your in a uh, memorial to, to um, honor someone in your family. It, whatever you want to do, we're here to work with you and, and make sure that it benefits the students that really need it the most. And I'm just so grateful um, that you expressed exactly that, that we need people to just be supportive. Um, 
when you all see me posting on my timeline, you all heard <laughs> it from Dr. J first. Uh, it's going to be a fabulous event. It, it it truly is. When when the galas occur, there's just such a momentum that starts to happen, and the connections that you meet with these people that come out to support Stembridge's Houston. It, it's just a different kind of connection. Mm-hmm. Having had seen um, the engineers that have gathered around Dr. J, um, some of the advisors that I have the, the privilege and honor to work with, along with some of the board members, it's just a great time that we have. And you will not be disappointed if you come out and you support the event. So you heard it from her firsthand. <laughs> and we hope to see all of you there. So that's our perfect segue into discussing something that currently occurred, and we're just so excited about it. SVH was just allotted a massive grant opportunity as a result of, you know, our relationship with Dr. Hollingsworth with the University of St. Thomas, Houston, who was also recognized at the Art of STEM Gala in 2018. With the grant, it will consist of coaching and advising services, wraparound support, mentoring, and tutorials. So can you share with us some of the details from SVH perspective, Dr. J, about the opportunities that will be given to students who would like to participate? Also, how may schools and students contact you as well? Yes, so we are really excited about this opportunity. Like you stated, Dr. Hollingsworth and I connected after he was one of our um, honorees at our first gala, and we just stayed connected And any opportunity or any um, event that we could connect on or support with his students or at Stembridge's Houston students, we were right there for each other. And he, we were written in this grant that was uh, recently awarded to University of St. Thomas. And part of the objectives and benchmarks for this grant will be for our students to connect with the University of St. Thomas students and their professors. So we'll be having research opportunities. We'll be having a um, research symposium during the summer for our STEM Bridges Houston students to participate and work and be mentored by University of St. Thomas faculty and staff, as well as um, graduate students and their, their upper division students that they have there. We will also be doing some training because um, for anyone who has any experience working with STEM, they know that that is a very hard to reach, hard to reach population. Um, you can recruit if you are doing theater. Um, you can recruit if you're doing journalism or just liberal studies. But it is very difficult sometimes to recruit students to go into the field of STEM. So we'll be having some staff development, some in services that talk about how to reach. Um, hard populations, retention, how to keep students in STEM programs so they continue on after high school, so they move on into college, into STEM majors, and actually work in STEM fields in their careers. So we'll be doing that. We'll be doing um, Saturday sessions where students are exposed to various professionals, engineers, technology specialists, analysts, um, We have some plans, you know, they'll be able to connect with some of the um, NASA astronauts and some people that have done a lot of research, in-depth research in the sciences, chemistry, biology, so that type of thing. So there's going to be some great opportunities Um, if students are interested in participating and being a part of this specific program. They can go to our website, www.stembridgeshouston.com. There is an application that's located on our website. They can download that application and send it back to us. And then we will contact them 
for consideration for them to actually be a participant specifically with this program. It's a, it's a great program. Um, our goal is to get underrepresented populations into STEM, to get more of them to, so we have more females, so we have more minorities that are represented, represented in the STEM areas. So that's what the grant uh, overall objective is. And of course, that's what STEM Bridges Houston objective is. So it's, it's a great opportunity. And we're, we're really, really excited about some of the activities and some of the research projects that we're going to be doing. It's, it's going to be really exciting. And it's a three-year grant. So we'll be doing this for a, a little while. Yes, ma'am. It's very exciting. And just for some of our parents, just in case, if you aren't clear on what STEM is, it's an approach to learning and development that integrates the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. So to Dr. J's point, when you consider minorities, essentially those who are uh, underrepresented and who you know may fall into poverty income guidelines or um, low income guidelines, you typically don't necessarily have many of those students who are interested or engaged in science, technology, engineering, and math. And so STEM Bridges Houston is doing a lot to help change that and to help transform the lives of those students in the area of STEM, through STEM, and to also help you all stay interconnected. Um, which at this point, if you can discuss some of the programs and services that STEM Bridges Houston has to offer, in addition to how your students have an opportunity to stay connected. Yes. <laughs> so like you said, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math is STEM Bridges Houston's focal, focal point. We provide services and we have programs in other areas but that is our main focus, is to bring um, first generation, underrepresented populations into the STEM arena. Um, we also have programs that work specifically with girls. We have a girls leadership program where we take girls from fifth grade up and we have a two-day leadership retreat with them. We bring in mentors, we bring in guest speakers. They're able to do some fun stuff. They're able to learn. They're able to learn about themselves and about the society that we live in. It's We try to provide as much as we can to empower them as young ladies um, growing up to be young women and to be grown women. We also have a male mentorship program that is almost along the same lines. We try to provide uh, male mentors for our male mentorship program participants. So they have someone that they can connect with, that someone will stay with them and follow up with them and make sure that, that they are staying on the right path and that they are staying focused on the priorities that they have in their life. We have an outreach program. Our outreach program, um, we have an outreach program that works with parents and students in the general public. So we'll do workshops on college readiness, college prep, where we're actually bringing in financial aid advisors or representatives to do workshops to help parents and students facilitate the FAFSA application, the free you know, application for federal student aid. We also have uh, workshops where we talk about different majors, different fields, career days. We have an upcoming engineer day and that is scheduled for October 24th. It will be virtual, but it's open to the public. So we have some great panelists and great speakers that will be joining us on that day to share their experiences of how they got into the positions that they're in. Um, and then we, our final two programs are our scholars program. We have a scholars high school program and we have a scholars college program. Our high school program, we recruit students at ninth grade and we follow them and work with them with individual 
assistance for four years on everything. Like you said, tutoring, college readiness, and career path. Um, after they graduate from high school, they go into our scholars program, um, college, their scholars program for the college students. And the college students, we follow them, we track them, we still provide them with support. It's very hard for them to get rid of me after I get them in ninth grade. I just kind of stay with them. And, um, you know, we have an alumni organization that after they've graduated, after they have graduated from college and started their degree, or their, I'm sorry, their, after they've started their careers, we still stay in contact. We try to get together at least once a year. Several of them live out of the state. They don't even live here anymore. But, you know, usually during the winter time, they come back home. We all try to get together and get caught up. It's, it's an extended family that we have. And that's the beautiful thing about it is that we don't try to have just where we just have that one time contact with you, but we want to make sure that we're there. STEM Bridges is there, that we're there to provide support, that they were, they were there when you need us, not just when you're in high school trying to get good grades, but after you've started your career and you might need some advice on making a career change, we still want to be there in that capacity to provide support and assistance. So we upset. We're busy. We are very busy. <laughs> Ooh, busy. <as> <laughs> understand that. In of Houston, um, God has been faithful because um, it's been a lot of work poured in. And I will say this: um, the events that you know that are held and where the alumni come together, whether it's for Christmas, whether it's a day with the engineers, um, essentially with the event when we uh, when there's discussion about um, the students and how they can uh, take their their SAT scores and all of the different scholarships that are available to them. When you have host those particular workshops, that that's open to people who want to come. Can you talk a little bit about that? So people who aren't connected with STEM Bridges Houston, they actually may think about coming out and joining us for the next time we help to teach the students about how to apply for college and what grants and opportunities are available, scholarships are available for them. Yes, absolutely. So like I said, our our website is a wealth of information. We have an events tab there. So when we have workshops, when we have events, when we have career days, like you said, when we have outreach activities, that is open to the public and you can get information on what date it's being held, where it's being held, the time, the specifics. You can get all of that information on our website under the events tab. And we usually have a, a calendar. There's usually more than one thing going on. So we try to put as much as we can on the website in advance so you can plan. But it's open to the public. Not, I'd venture to say 90% of our activities are open to the public. They're not restricted. So like you said, if someone hears about it and you want to get some information on how to apply for financial aid, you're more than welcome to join. All of our activities, all of our outreach and our workshops are 100% free. So there's no cost involved. There's no fee involved for you to attend and come and get information that helps you as a student or helps you as a parent. Yes, and, and that's one of the things I love about SBH. I mean, the parents are just treated with the most of respect and they engage. And I have never seen parents come out and support a program like they do for SBH. When I tell you, shout out to all the parents because mm -hmm. that food that they come on down, Dr. <laughs> that food that they bring in to those events and how they show up for those students, amazing. I don't yes. think that one child has not had support from a relative. Those parents are just unique. They always show up and show out. They do, especially like you said, at our annual 
winter cultural diversity potluck. They all bring a dish to share and we have 10 banquet tables uh, full of <laughs> dishes for everyone just to come and just like you said, and have a good time and spend some time with their other family, with their Stembridges family. So it is, we are very thankful for our parents. They I always say that it cannot be done without the support of everyone. Everyone, you don't have to know the information. You don't have to be an expert. You, you, you could be a parent and I don't know about going to college. I never went to college. That's, that's okay. But if you just are giving your thumbs up to say, I, I'm, I'm here for STEM Bridges, you know, I support you helping my child. I support you in providing that, that assistance that's needed. That, that's all we need. We, we, if we can get that, we're, we're, we're a team. You know, like they said, it's a, it's a village that raises a child. And you, you, you can't always just get everything from one entity. It comes from, it can come from several entities. So we're just happy and thankful that the parents entrust us with their sons and their daughters to say that, you know, we believe that you can help them in their future with planning their future and getting to their goals. So we're very thankful for our parents and the support that we get from them. Wow. Well, Dr. J, this has been just amazing. I can't believe how quickly the time went by. But before we exit, I also want to encourage people to go to the website to make sure that you check out the date that you need to save, which is October 24th for Engineer Day. Yes. OK, if, if you want to talk a little bit about that and then also let them know about your YouTube channel, how they can follow you, where to follow you, and then we can conclude. Okay, yeah. So we are, like you said, our next event is October 24th. It will be a virtual engineer day. You can go to our website to register for that, free registration, um, but you can register in advance. We will have various individuals um, professional engineers that will be on different panels. We'll be having breakout rooms in our virtual setting. So you'll actually be able to talk to engineers that are doing the job every day. We have a chemical engineer coming, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, structural engineers. We have a great, great representation of the field and the diversity that is in the field that we are trying to, um, like you said, increase and promote. So you'll be able to talk to, um, if you're thinking about going into engineering and you're a female, you'll be able to talk to female engineers and ask them about their experience, how what classes they should be taking in high school, what classes do you take in college, which college should you go to? You'll be able to talk to them in, um, a direct conversation. And we really have some good people that are going to be coming and they're very open. They want to see other young people um, follow in that, in their same footsteps. Uh, we, you can follow us on social media. We have a YouTube channel. Um, we do have Instagram. We have Twitter. Um, I believe all of it's under SBH, um, STEM Bridges Houston. And, um, if you go to our webpage, you can connect to all of our social media. You can uh, click the button and, and directly connect to us. We um, interact with everyone that um, you know approaches us. We're always trying to get new partnerships and we are always trying to make sure that we're there for students. So even if you feel hesitant and you're like, I just have a question, but I'm not in the scholars program. I wonder if I can ask that question. You absolutely can ask that question. Go to our social media, ask that question. We will respond and we will give you that answer just like you are in the scholars program. Wow. Well, everyone, I am so excited and I cannot wait to see all the new fruit that will develop as a result of everyone working together for SBH. Um, just seeing Dr. J thrive in her element. And it just started with her accepting her calling 
it started with her saying, you know what, I will do this. And I'm going to tell you all, it's been a lot of work for her, a lot. She sacrifices her sleep, her time, her money, everything. But to see the fruits of the labor is just such a blessing for me. So Dr. J, thank you so much for coming today as our guest. And we're looking forward for people, whether it's sponsorship opportunities, partnership opportunities, scholarships, if you need them. Um, if you're in press or media and you want to help get the information out, let us know, you know, contact yes. us today to go on the website because great things are happening and let's be a part of it together.